Welcome to the news hour. Hurricane Idalia is gaining strength with winds of 100 miles per hour. It's now a Category 2 system and is barreling toward Florida, where it's expected to make landfall as a Category 3 storm tomorrow. Rain from the hurricane's outer bands is already falling in Florida. Idalia is expected to punish the western coast of the state, particularly the Big Bend region near the Panhandle in the northwest. Forecasters are warning of a catastrophic storm surge, along with destructive winds, flooding rain, and possibly even tornadoes. More than 20 counties were under evacuation orders late today as the storm takes aim at Florida. Along the Gulf Coast of Florida, people in Tampa and elsewhere are focused on sandbags instead of sandy beaches. In every situation, I always start preparing, putting away all my um, patio furniture, bringing in anything out there that's loose and can fly away, uh, getting the sandbags. Hurricane Idalia is expected to make landfall in the state on Wednesday. It will be the first storm to strike Florida this hurricane season. The National Hurricane Center projects sustained winds of up to 120 miles per hour. It's been tracking into the Big Bend area pretty consistently with a little bit of variations. But at the same time, I mean, you got to watch how this thing goes and, and where it can impact. So, so just make sure you're heeding the warnings from your local emergency management officials. Make sure you're doing what you need to do uh, to keep yourself and your family safe. Video from the International Space Station today showed the storm churning in the Gulf of Mexico as it closed in on Florida. Durante the storm has already swept past Cuba, drenching Havana. Residents there waded through floodwaters trying to get to higher ground. We've been flooded for two days. It hadn't risen much before, but yes, there's a lot of water. It has rained quite a lot. Back in Florida, the U.S. Coast Guard prepared helicopters to assist in rescue efforts. The state also mobilized more than 1,000 National Guard members. FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell said Idalia could significantly raise water levels off the Florida coast. This storm is very strong and is expected to strengthen to a major hurricane by the time it makes landfall due to high surface temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. This means heavy winds, high winds, heavy rain, and a forecasted 12-foot storm surge in some of the areas along the western coast. St. Petersburg Mayor Ken Welch urged caution, especially in areas hard hit by Hurricane Ian less than a year ago. Storms are unpredictable. Folks that have been in Florida for a long time know it. Maybe folks who are newer to the area see that track and think they're safe. And we know from Ian that is not the case. It's a lesson learned at great cost in New Orleans, where today they marked 18 years since Hurricane Katrina blasted ashore, devastating parts of the city and surrounding communities and killing more than 1,800 people. Now to update us on the latest with Hurricane Adalia and how it's advancing, I'm joined by Jamie Rome, Deputy Director at the National Hurricane Center. Jamie, welcome back. Let's just start with the latest. You've been tracking this storm as we speak right now, just past 6 o'clock here on the East Coast. Where is the storm and where is it headed? Well, it's currently centered about uh, 200 miles southwest of Tampa Bay, Florida. Maximum staying winds have been steadily increasing throughout the day. It is now a category two on the Saffir Simpson scale, uh, which puts the peak winds at 100 miles per hour. And, and looking at the satellite imagery, uh, it is continuing to intensify as we speak. It, you noted there that the uh, FEMA director, administrator rather, said it is intensifying and strengthening. Do you still expect it to make landfall as a category three storm? Oh, yes. Uh, all indications are it's it's continuing to strengthen, um, and, and our forecast takes it to a Category 3 uh, over the next uh, 12 to 18 hours. And has the path changed at all? Do you, where are you expecting it to make landfall, and what should folks expect on the ground to see when that happens? The projected path has been relatively consistent throughout the, the uh, last several days leading up to the event. It hasn't changed, and I don't anticipate uh, significant changes. It looks like it's going to make landfall somewhere in the Florida Big Bend area. It's hard to tell precisely where, which county, uh, but somewhere in the Florida Big Bend area, most likely passing very closer east of uh, Tallahassee area, so um, they could get some pretty big winds as well. 
Jamie, part of the National Weather Service advisory said today, don't mess around with this storm. They've put this system into historical context a little bit, but compare it, if you can, to storms in the past. We've heard a lot about Hurricane Ian, for example, which folks there are still recovering from. How does Idalia compare? Well, hurricanes are sort of like people, and they're all a little bit different. So comparing storms is, is, can be problematic at times. Um, but what I can tell you is if you've never experienced the power of a major hurricane, uh, you're probably underestimating just how strong it is. These winds, uh, you can see on this graphic here, you think of this red area as where the hurricane uh, force winds could move inland. You can see how far those winds carry inland, including all the way into southern Georgia. Governor DeSantis said earlier the highway tolls are being waived, shelters are opening. Uh, we know people are being encouraged to evacuate. For those who haven't been able to or who can't yet, what's your advice to them? What's your message? Unfortunately, you're down to the last few hours. Um, the conditions are going to deteriorate rapidly through the evening and overnight areas in advance of this system. We're already seeing heavy rain bands and strong winds move across the Florida Peninsula uh, as we speak. Um, this is no longer a sit and wait, sit and watch, or hope for a different outcome. It is clear if you're in the path of this system, and most especially, most especially if you've been ordered to evacuate, you need to do that now, not tomorrow, now. That is Jamie Rome, Deputy Director at the National Hurricane Center with the latest on Hurricane Adalia. Jamie, thank you so much.